This training session will be focusing on the DCT Business Communicator application. Once installed, you will see a small blue cloud loaded on your desktop in order to access the application. You can double click on the icon to open the application. Once the application has opened, here it will prompt you to enter in a username. If you are a direct dial user, your direct inward dial number would be your username. If you are not a DID user, you would need to enter in the main number of your location, followed by a dot, and then your extension. You will then be prompted to enter in your password to the application. Once you go ahead and enter your password, you can select the Remember Password option if you would like it to remember for future use, and you can also select to have the application sign you in automatically. Whatever your choices are are personal preference. Once you select the sign in button, it will take you into the application. When you sign into the application for the first time, it will prompt you with the Outlook integration option. That way, if you have Outlook installed on your computer, you can allow this client to search your Outlook contacts and observe any calendar events that you have to change your presence. If you select yes now, it will automatically enable that feature, or you always have the ability to select no and change it into the options section later on. Once in the application, you will see across the top there are various menu options. I'll go through these in a high level overview to begin, and then we'll follow up in more detail throughout the training. File will give you information about the application, some options available, and the ability to sign out and exit the communicator application. The edit screen allows you to copy and paste different areas of the screen. Your contacts tab will allow for you to manage your contacts, create new ones, sort them into groups and different features. The calls option will give you the ability to choose your audio device, your volume settings, any kind of mobility settings associated with your um, setup. Conversations will pull up anything that's associated with the chat aspect of this application. Please note it does require another user to utilize the UC1 application to utilize the chat functionality. You also have the ability to look at different windows and different settings and a help screen will also be available within this area. The top blue section will provide information about your user profile. I am currently signed into a demo account as our product manager. I can see here to the left, if I right click, I have the ability to update a profile photo if I wish to do so. I can see here conference room options if you subscribe to our conference services. Here I can see it's showing my current status of in a meeting. This is displaying because I am utilizing the Outlook calendar integration feature. When I select the drop down, I also have the ability to choose from the following status options available, away, busy, and offline. I have the ability to override my current meeting status if I wish to do so. Here you can choose to set a location and let somebody know where you are currently located. And I also have the ability to add a quick note here to say what I'm doing. So here I'm performing the UC1 training so I can update my account accordingly. The left hand navigation pane will give you additional information. Here I can see I have a contact screen, chat history, call history, a dial pad, and a directory. Up top here in the contact screen, I have the ability to search for a particular user that is built within the system. This will search from my corporate directory as well as my Outlook contacts. If I wish to initiate a chat with this person, I can just right click on their name and choose to chat. I can type a quick message that says hello to this particular user, and then when they respond back to me, I will see that message come through as well. At the top of the screen, I can also see there are additional options associated with this particular conversation. If I wish to, I can initiate a phone call, a video call, a call from my physical desk phone, screen share, and find additional information about this particular user. If they choose to chat back, that will also populate within my screen here. I have the ability to see that user's presence as well, so I can now see that they are signed in on a mobile application. I also can choose to call 
call from desk phone or video call from the right hand navigation pane. Once I add someone into my chat history, I can then look and see the history of that chat. If I had additional users that I was chatting with, all conversations would be listed down here in the left hand side of the screen. You can then choose to look at yesterday's chat history, last week, last month, or all history, or delete the history of your conversation. In addition to my chat history, I can also view my call history. Here, I can see any calls that I had going on, and any missed calls will populate in red. That is how I can determine what type of call it was. I also have the ability to look at any voicemail messages that may have been left for me. I currently have no voicemails. If I did, I would be able to click on them and play them through the automation of the system. If I need to initiate a phone call back to somebody within my history, all I need to do is double click on that user to place a call to them. I can then see that I'm connected on this call. It will show you the duration and all call control options will be listed here at the top. I have a red button to initiate a hang up. I have a pause button to place that call on hold. I can mute myself and the microphone by selecting the mute button. And if I hit the drop down option here, I can see transfer, conference, park, a dial pad, and I can choose the audio device and control the volume that I am connected on. I'm currently talking through the PC speakers, but if I had a USB headset to connect, I can select to utilize my headset instead. This is one location where you can make these adjustments and changes. I also can do so in the left hand navigation pad. Here I see my hang up button, my holds button, mute, transfer, conference, park, and more. When an inbound call is sent to me, I can see a pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner and I can choose to accept the audio or decline. Once connected, all options will be just as if we were on an outbound place call previously. If I wish to initiate a transfer of a call, I can select on the transfer option and then I can type in the user's name that I would like to direct that call to. Once I select on the particular user I want to send it to, I can choose now to select Transfer Now, Attended Audio, or Attended Video. Transfer Now would be a blind transfer, would go direct to that user's extension, and if they do not answer, would end up in their voicemail. The Attended Audio feature will give you the ability to announce that call to that particular user and then continue on with the transfer. The Attended Video would be the same. When you select in the gear in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you can left click on it to take you into your general settings. If you right click on it, it is going to provide you with some additional options to quickly select what audio device you wish to use, change your do not disturb status, adjust your call forward settings, remote office, anywhere and in incoming and outgoing calls. All these options can be found within this uh, options menu as well. Under general, I can choose to change my language. I can adjust my login settings if I would like it to remember my password or sign me in automatically or run this program as soon as my system starts. You can also set it to enable or disable some of the notifications. If you'd like confirmation before deleting history or a contact, here's where you can adjust those settings. You also have the ability to turn off the tooltips. That's going to be the hovering options that are available. You can choose to enable a spell checker and auto capitalization if you would like that for your chat features as well. You also have the ability to tell it to uh, uh, pop up any error messages that might arise. The audio and video settings give me the ability to select what I would like to utilize as the input and output devices for my conversations. I am currently using the default PC microphone and speakers on my computer. If you utilize a USB headset and you have it connected, you will be able to select that within the drop down menu. I also have the ability to choose what I would like my ring device to be. If you're using a headset, you can set it to ring through your headset or you can use it as the default output device which would be the PC speakers. 
You can also choose what you would like to be your ringtone that will be playing and what tone you would like to utilize for any incoming chat messages you may receive through the system. The incoming call screen allows you to adjust how your phone is set up for inbound calls. If I want to enable or disable the Do Not Disturb feature, I can select the radio button that is located next to it. Anonymous call rejection will reject any calls that come through anonymous and send them directly to my voicemail if enabled. Call forwarding, there are default call forward settings in place that if you are busy or do not answer, your calls will go into the voicemail system. The call forwarding settings within this screen will give you the ability to override those default settings. You also have another option of when not reachable. Your phone is considered not reachable when you are not signed into the application or if you've lost network connectivity. You can set this to be a cell phone number or another location if you wish to have it reroute your calls when it sees that your desktop PC is not reachable. If you do not input anything special into this field, the voicemail system is considered the default unreachable location. Simultaneous ring will allow you to ring your desk phone and another external telephone number simultaneously. You have the ability to enable that at any time. Remote office will reroute your calls directly to an external telephone device. So if you wanted to send all of your calls to your cell phone number, you can choose to enable the remote office feature and then go ahead and set the telephone number within there. Call waiting is on as a default and is going to give you a call waiting tone like you would experience on a home landline or a cell phone number. Anywhere is a feature similar to the Simul Ring feature, and that is going to give you the ability to have your phone ring both on your PC and your cell phone, and the ability to move it back and forth between devices. The outgoing call options will allow you to set automatic callback, highlight to call, and blocking caller ID. If you select Highlight to Call, this will allow you to create a shortcut key that will allow you to call numbers that you have highlighted on within the application. If you choose to block your caller ID, it will send out the main default number. Next is the voicemail options. I can see here that my busy and unanswered calls will be set to voicemail. I have also chosen to have my voicemails go directly to my email in WAV file format. If you wish to use unified messaging, you can set it that it goes to the voicemail system as well as sending a copy of that to your email. That would be in, in place if you are choosing this top option. If you have it forward to this email address only, you will not receive your voicemails via the system, just in email format. I can choose where my zero out option is going to go within my voicemail box, the number of rings before it plays my greeting, and I can also choose to disable message deposit. In the case that maybe you're going on medical leave and you don't want anyone to be able to leave you a message, you can disable message deposit. You can then choose to disconnect that call after your greeting or you can send it to another location. If you are a call center agent, the services option is going to give you the ability to change your status and sign yourself in and out of the call center queues. If you are participating in a call center in the DCT environment, the important things to remember are you will sign in once at the beginning of your shift, sign out once at the end of your shift, and everything in between will be available and unavailable time. I can see within the drop down menu that my available, unavailable, wrap up, sign out, and options are available. Here, I have different unavailable codes that could be available if your company is electing to utilize those options. When I sign in, it does not automatically put me into an available status. In the case that I need to start up my programs and different systems to be able to take the calls that I need to answer, it wants me to make myself available before it will go ahead and present me with any call center calls. In the case that I leave to go to the restroom or on lunch or a various break, I want to make sure I put myself into an unavailable state. As long as I am in an unavailable state, it will not present a call center call to you at that time. I also have the ability to see the cues that I am responsible for taking calls in. I can see product management, customer support, and technical support are some of the cues that I am responsible for taking calls in. 
The customer support queue also allows for different features. So I have the ability to choose to make myself um, available or not within a particular queue. The extensions option will allow for you to enable and disable the Outlook contact and calendar integration features that are available within this application. Now that we have gone through this application, I think you will see that the top menu options are going to direct you to the various options that are available within the application itself. From the calls menu, if I select on incoming calls, it's going to take us to the menu that we reviewed previously. If you have any questions at all, please refer to the UC1 for Desktop user guide that is sent to you as a part of this application. Thank you.